Well, we're wrapping up two weeks of the parliamentary uh, fortnight, uh, parliamentary fortnight, which could well be the last of this parliament, or indeed the last of the government. It's still possible that the Prime Minister will come back from Glasgow and think he can't hold his ramshackle government together with band-aid and sticky tape any longer and roll the dice and call an election this year. Uh, but we've heard a lot in the last fortnight about plan. The word plan has probably been the dominant word. Um, I'll give the government credit at the outset for one plan they did get through the parliament, they voted through the parliament, which was their plan to protect their golden boy, the entitled one, Christian Porter, from facing scrutiny for his secret anonymous donations. It was the first time in Australian history that the Speaker of the Parliament recommended a member be referred to the Privileges Committee for investigation and the government used its numbers to stop that from happening. There'll be no transparency. And so that plan they did get voted through. But there's been no plan for a powerful independent National Anti-Corruption Commission no legislation introduced, more than a thousand days since this Prime Minister said he'd act. Uh, there's been no plan for mRNA vaccines to be manufactured in Australia, more than a year since Scott Morrison said uh, it could be only nine to 12 months until we make mRNA vaccines here. No plan, still too little too late, slow and reactive on the pandemic. But shamefully, shockingly today, as the Prime Minister jets off to Glasgow, we've learnt this week that the Prime Minister, in his ninth year in office, has no plan for Australia to play our part to combat global warming and, most fundamentally for the economy, no plan to save Australia's economy from punishing carbon tariffs that much of the developed world now, it seems, stands ready to impose upon us, decimating large swathes of our export sectors, industry and trade. Um, now, apparently, I think the Prime Minister's plan is, if you say plan a lot, he said plan 95 times, he thinks he might fool Australians that he's doing something. I honestly can't understand how he thinks he's going to fool the global community and the rest of the world. But look, some days with this government, you really don't know whether to laugh or cry. So hats off to Amy Ramakis for her uh, terrific uh, contribution this week, where she announced to the nation her plan by 2050 to become an Olympic swimmer. Um, she did say she wasn't going to do any training, make any changes to her diet, lifestyle or anything. She was relying solely on future improvements to swimsuit technology because uh, that's the Australian way now, to adopt a goal that has net zero chance of being achieved. Um, inspired, of course, Annika Wells' contribution yesterday, she's going to be an ice skater, so I'm inspired by these two great women, and I would like to announce to the nation now my plan to become a male model by 2050. Uh, I'm not going to actually hit the gym, pound the pavement, change the diet. I'm going to be relying solely on future improvements to Botox and collagen technology. Um, but of course, it shouldn't just be about politicians or those in the media. So I encourage every Australian to get on board with the Morrison way, the Australian way, and adopt your own goals for what you would like to do, what you would like to be by 2050 that you have net zero chance of achieving. Frankly, my male modelling career has more credibility than the Prime Minister's modelling behind his not plan. It is a scam. But jokes aside, this is embarrassing. It's selling out our national interest. This bloke's getting on the plane tonight and going to Glasgow with Tony Abbott's targets. Let that sink in. Ninth year in government and he's going to Glasgow with Tony Abbott's targets. No progress, no plan. It's a pamphlet, a 129 page pamphlet. Now, to get to this point, we've had to endure two weeks of the fake family fight. You know, people said months ago, we were always going to get there. Of course he was always going to get to net zero in some form. But not even I could have imagined that he'd come up with a pamphlet with not one new initiative, no new investment, and no actual trajectory to get there. Nothing. Um, the only change we saw was Keith Pitt promoted to the Cabinet. We still don't know the real price for the National Party. Um, but he's missed the memo as well that Glasgow is not about 2050, the rest of the world's already there. We actually effectively signed up to that in the Paris Agreement. Glasgow's about the increasing urgency of action and what we're going to do by 2030. Um, that's what Glasgow's about, and he's fronting up with Tony Abbott's targets. Um, so make no mistake, this is a scam. Um, but look, I'll close by saying these are strong words. I'm no fan of this government and this Prime Minister particularly, but I've never felt more contempt and embarrassment than I have this week watching these antics. This is not an adult government. There's no modelling. Nine years and they still have no action. 
I don't know, though, whether I feel more contempt for the right-wing nut jobs in the National Party. I mean, at least give them credit. They're saying what they believe. Terrified now of being wedged by Pauline Hanson and Clive Palmer. It's ironic, isn't it? The Prime Minister's created this monster which is now threatening to eat his own government. He's spent years running around the country telling lie after lie, scare campaign about electric vehicles and emissions and industry, and now it's threatening to eat his own government. But it's the modern Liberals, the so-called modern Liberals, the city Liberals, who say one thing in their electorates and vote with Barnaby Joyce in Canberra. They're the ones who should feel the real contempt of Australians. I mean, how can anyone like, you know, Tim Wilson, it wasn't long ago he was out there on television saying we couldn't get out of the Kyoto Protocol fast enough. Now he's the mouthpiece for the government's not planned scam. Well, that foolish motor mouth Katie Allen from Higgins, from inner city Melbourne, I wasn't allowed to call her that in the parliament, I have to withdraw. There's no withdrawal out here. Um, who reads out these idiotic Liberal Party talking points that make no sense. I mean, people like Tim and Katie have a great advantage over most parliamentarians. They have no shame. Facts don't matter. We'll just read out the dot points. Um, but how can any of these people go to a university or a high school and look any young Australian in the eye and say what they're doing is right and in the national interest? Um, I worry, like most Australians, about the kind of country that my daughter will grow up in and the kind of world she'll inherit. Um, and it's not just about global warming and the environment. It is absolutely about our economy. The world is decarbonising. It's moving rapidly and Australia is being left out. We're missing out on those jobs and the opportunities that come from climate change. And so I'll close with this thought. As of tonight, Barnaby Joyce will be the acting Prime Minister of this country. One of the world's biggest emitters, India, has refused calls to commit to net zero. Doesn't it show that Australia has found a sensible position on the issue, considering one of the world's biggest emitters won't commit to the same target we have? Well, we've, as I said, we've got the same target that Tony Abbott had. Now, I'm not going to provide a commentary on what every individual country is doing. Labor said for some time that there were two big events that needed to play out. Um, the first one was the US presidential election, and we've seen a massive change in global politics uh, and the global climate debate. And that's completely changed the policy frame and the global dialogue. Uh, that's the election of President Biden. The other, of course, is the Glasgow conference. And so, as you'd expect, as we've seen before through all of these big international forums, countries are positioning, they're putting initial commitments on the table, they're staking some turf. Now, we're going to let that play out. Labor's said that we will have our roadmap out before the election, uh, after we've taken stock of where the world's got to in Glasgow. So I think we have to remain optimistic. Um, we have to remain optimistic and hope for the best out of this conference. It's too serious for us not to approach. But remember also, um, it's not just about Australia's contribution. It's also about our moral leadership in the world. If we're fronting up to a conference with Tony Abbott's targets, how on earth do we have any moral stature or policy stature or credibility in talking to other countries, be they India or any country in the world, if we're not prepared to do our part? 